Welcome back, but only one last time for today to the Remote Duo TCG Invitational. We have had seven incredible matches and we only have the last top 16 match to find out who will advance to tomorrow to the last top 8 match. It has been an incredible journey, a lot of different decks, a lot of different countries and players and we have yet again one match for you guys which is the one between Tim Meckel and Steven Roberts. Both guys which we had already seen in the past but a matchup which we have uh, not yet seen, although these decks are quite uh, known and we have seen them this weekend. As uh, Steven Roberts is playing Altergeist and he will try to be the second to advance to the top. And the other opponent, Team Mechel, is playing Drytron. It's the last Drytron deck out of the three that we saw, the two we have yet seen did not win their match. If uh, he can make it, the team will be actually the seventh different deck in the top eight. So what a, what a meta, what a absolutely amazing diversity in the top cut. But we'll see. And before jumping into action one last time, let's hear it from these guys themselves. Uh, I play, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! since my childhood and then took a long break. Uh, two years ago, I playing competitive again. I don't have a favorite character, but I, but as a child, I watched the original series in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, with Yugi and Seto Kaiba and the GX series. Uh, I didn't engage with Master Lua yet. I will wait until it's released and will let myself uh, open to the prizes. Uh, I enjoyed playing with the Talon Knights. Uh, the most so far. I really like the play there with continuous play uh, traps, uh, permanent trap cards like Call of the Hunted and Finish Chain. Uh, if I had to create a card, uh, I would create a new archetype or a new card with a never seen mechanic. Great words here by team. As mentioned, the last remaining Drytron player in the event, but his opponent Steven, I think. Uh, will try his best to kick him out and be the one who advances to the top eight. So let's hear it from Steven Roberts with his interview. So I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh since 2017, just before uh, Link Monsters were introduced. Uh, obviously I played before that as a kid for a bit, and then I got into the game more competitively uh, during the end of 2018. So my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! anime character is Soul Burner because he plays the Salman Great Archetype which is one of my favorite archetypes and he has some really cool duels during the anime. Yeah, I'm excited for Master Duel. Uh, it's nice to have an official online simulator and being able to test like different decks and cards you may not have in real life. So the card theme I've had the most fun playing with is Spiral it's one of our favourite archetypes. I think it's really cool, like the card design, the mechanics. It's had a lot of different combos in the past that are really powerful. I enjoyed playing it. So if I could create any card, it would be a Link 4 monster for the Altergeist archetype, which can tribute another monster to gain its attack. And if it destroys a monster by battle, it can destroy another monster you put controls to attack again then it would have some protection effect. Nice, nice again uh, from Steven. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, he is uh, the Altergeist player. He might join the other Altergeist player, which we saw advancing to the top eight, or he might be kicked out. We'll find out real soon. It's a matchup we have not yet exploited. So I would say if our players are ready, let's not waste time and let's go to the table for the last time today. So, uh, as we mentioned, it's a very interesting matchup, but the Dyrol might put a huge role, as always, when you have a deck like Altergeist uh, in the mix. Uh, do you have any favorites among the two? Yeah, if I have to pick mm -hmm. one between uh, these two guys... Uh, I mean, I have enjoyed a lot uh, watching Altergeist earlier on, 
But on the other hand, I think that both dry drum players, such as Maren and our last match we just saw, were like very unfortunate. And uh, hopefully, we will see uh, one of these two guys advancing, and hopefully, we will see dry drum in action once again tomorrow in the top eight. Yeah, we see the lonely copy of uh, Valer del Vittorio. Just one copy of Valer in the deck from Steven. We'll see if he gets his hand on it. Uh, but once again, uh, it's definitely an interesting choice. But I really like that team is actually only playing the one Eva. So he's <laughs> playing after the new list. So we'll see, as I mentioned, some players like Jesse Cotton said, no, the list is only helping you out to figure out the correct build. We'll see if that's the case. And we start oh. things off with an interesting opening here. Yeah, I think this is the first time that we see a player activating Power of Prosperity and uh, actually banishing all the three cards. Very interesting choice because like, he paid off. Uh, he revealed the Cyber Emergency, which has been activated. And uh, as uh, our previous match in which we have seen the Alter Guys matchup, Stephen from his side uh, is playing the Ash Blossom and the Impermanence. Only yeah. the one Vader, you know. You just have the walls. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, solid opening though, and uh, we'll see the usual uh, Ben 10 uh, getting added to the end. And I think he can be really, really happy about having won this die roll once he finds out that Steven is playing uh, Altergeist. Solid stuff here from the uh, from team, and uh, looks like no response at all from Steven. Hmm. Yeah, Fine. I was thinking about it uh, a lot, but in the end, it doesn't seem like he has a appropriate response therefore we'll see the ben 10 yeah again ben 10 uh, being uh, a huge line we saw how good it can be and how much the deck struggles without it uh, once it was removed by cycle reader and yeah now we see already the usual combo uh i gotta say the team is also just like the last duelist uh, playing the red eyes engine so he's uh, going for the dragoon uh, combo here and uh, I think uh, in this specific matchup, that's huge. Because the Dragoon, I think, has probably no out in the deck. It's like very complicated to do out it. Almost impossible. And uh, I think Steven uh, is in trouble if he doesn't have an answer for that. Also, three twisters in the main deck yeah, from team. Definitely. Yeah, we've seen previously in our uh, top 16 match uh, how strong was the start with the... Herald of Ultimate Ness plus Beatrice plus the Red Dice Dragoon, uh, it was crazy. And if Team can now put up this field, once again, uh, Stephen can be in trouble, especially because, like, Altergeist, still wondering how he can deal with Dragoon. No, it's, uh, uh, like, uh, really tough, and here we see the usual stuff, the Fafnir bringing back the Ben 10, and uh, just uh, sending the other Drydron uh, back. So, really, really solid stuff. Uh, and if you don't know what you're playing against, uh, this is a very safe opening uh, to just uh, have as many negates as possible uh, on the field. Uh, I think Steven, you can see, is uh, already very disappointed with this. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, we could see a scoop once he picks up his seeds card, just to prevent the information from being uh, shown to his opponent. Of course, like, I understand that, be, like, playing a deck like Altergeist, which is very good at grinding, but uh, if you don't really can find a way to contrast, like, a field like this, makes sense to go into game two, and especially because, like, you can take advantage of this. Yeah, so you see the Diviner. It wasn't really needed, but why not? And yeah, it's pretty much the combo that we have seen... Uh with Valerio, so you can just get the Herald if you feel like, otherwise, uh, I mean, at the end of the combo you will get the Anaconda no matter what, which gives you the Dragoon. No, I think, Steven, uh, what do you think, like, would you consider, uh, like, of course you wait for your sixth card, right? But then you consider if you can really find a way to out the Dragoon. Because yeah. most likely we will see... Uh, I mean, for now he doesn't think about the Dragoon, I gotta say. Mm. Uh, so we now see the 
you should start with the Beatrice, but as soon as he sees the Anaconda and the Dragoon, yeah, I mean... I don't think he has much of a chance to out uh, this kind of board. Anyways, I really like the fact that these players uh, were playing the Anaconda plus the Dragoon, something that we haven't seen so often uh, by Dryton players, and... Uh, it gives you basically another addition, and I think after October 1st, this is something that we will see for sure by Dragon players. Especially because, like, here, uh, once again, <clears throat> as you mentioned earlier, Tim is only playing one copy of Eva in his main deck at uh, the moment. Like, it uh, doesn't feel anything, so... <laughs> Good for him. Here comes the Herald. This is uh, just absolutely insane stuff. Herald, Dragoon, Beatrice, just like we saw in the game from Valerio, made a deck like Prank Kids with a lot of spells and Mystic Mind pick their cards up. So for Steven, it's even tougher, but we actually do not see the Anaconda. Okay. Interesting, interesting stuff. So Steven picks up his cards, at least as a chance now, but now. As you said, uh, we can see the Beatrice uh, being activated. Yeah, now it's ends Eva. Yeah. yeah. And he has basically five negates with the... Yeah, this with is the uh, so much stuff. Um, there are very few things that can come back. Maybe if he plays it really slowly with like a Torrential and a Solemn Strike, uh, there is a word in which he can win, but this is so, so tough if you're Steven. And that's why we have to keep in mind that maybe he prevents the information and just picks his card up. But it doesn't seem like he is considering that, actually. Is Tim playing uh, by any chance like Twin Twister as well, or...? Uh... Yeah, Tim is yeah. playing it. Okay. So, he's playing three copies of the card, okay. This extravagance I'm really not a fan of, because what are you really accomplishing? You're pretty much telling your opponent what kind of deck you're playing. Yeah because this restricts uh, the pool uh, significantly, and you always get a negate, so... I don't know. I'm really not a fan of this pot. Because, oh, like, if you have really a Torrential Trigger and a Solemn Strike, you basically go for it without wasting any yeah, cards, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, it doesn't make any mm, sense. So... I mean, it doesn't really accomplish much, because... you're not gonna finish the negates uh, from the end, I think, so... if that's the plan, uh, I don't know. I don't think that's a solid uh, way. And yeah, now he even completely reveals it by normal summoning uh, an Alter Geist. Uh, and let's see. Uh, trying his best to stay in the game, probably gonna set 4 and pass. Yeah. Okay. So 4 sets, uh, and now life uh, is uh, slightly weird for team. Is there gonna be a Twister? Wow. Whew. What an opening from team. And yeah, this uh, makes it really, really tough. The Solemn Strike is the only card that you really need to pay attention to. Uh, but even then, uh, so much advantage lost. So let's see what he ends up eating here. Now, let's see. It is uh, Strike. strike. Mm. So Strike, uh, definitely one of the few really, really good ones. Uh, he would need now another Strike and maybe a Torrential to just stay completely in the game top decking, which is not even like he wins the game, yeah. so... I don't know. Uh, this is a very weird scenario from Steven, uh, and uh, I don't think team uh, is gonna have many problems here. Well, of course, the rival is there, but, I mean, even the Red Ice Fuse. Yeah, know. I mean... Well, I think Steven is now considering yeah. to go. So yeah. Steven uh, picks up his cars, it's not like uh, he needed uh, them, but... Way, way too much. And now, only one game away from having uh, seven different decks in the top eight. Something we have not yet seen, honestly. Uh, and uh, if you're Steven, uh, I guess you don't side uh, too much. Yeah. His deck was, of course, uh, full of traps. Uh, but he does have a few decent options. Uh, in the form of uh, different dimension ground and the cycle readers. So yeah. maybe we'll bring those in. Uh, uh, while when it comes to team, uh, we said that he was already manning triple twister, and I think uh, he will happily side in the evenly matched. Yeah, definitely. But the rest, uh, not so much. No. So probably three twister, three evenly, but that's not really too much. So I think we might see a game shoe unless he picks one of those cards up, uh, where the alter guys they can capitalize, but then in game three, uh, it's back to team uh, to try and combo off. But. 
for now let's just see how things go and uh, guys again thank you uh, for watching and just as a reminder you can miss uh, and uh, if you missed any of the action just feel free to go back uh, uh, both on YouTube or here on Twitch or whenever you're watching uh, to watch uh, the other matches we have had today. We have a lot of action and uh, if you missed any of it I really suggest uh, checking it back. So, let's see. Now I'm curious because like this is the third time in a row that we see a Drayton uh, this, uh, today winning game one and then losing the match. So, of course, this is like something that, that happened even before in our previous matches and uh, maybe this time team wins the game Shueno uh, or otherwise Steve and of course going uh, first now in this game show us uh, a good advantage. Yeah, so now let's just see how it happens. So. Yeah, of course, if uh, if I were team, uh, like, from this point of view, of course, you know that game one, either you draw an Entrap or otherwise uh, uh, you are actually exposed to a deck like Drydron. And nothing that he could have done, basically. Curious to see if he had a Torrential, though, if the Twin Twister was not there, uh, uh, maybe... Okay, so seems like our players are almost ready. So let's see again for one of them. It will be as easy as a shoe all for a team uh, to advance. Uh, but I really gotta give the advantage to Steven in this game too, considering the amount of eight is uh, maining and uh, the very few removals his opponent has. Okay, okay, hands are being picked up. Up to Steven now. We have seen how powerful uh, Altergeist deck yeah. still is in 2021. So now, again, uh, the, the question is does he pick up uh, the Altergeist cards? Because once again, sure, you can have as many traps as you want, but if you don't uh, have the Altergeist the core, uh, you are losing eventually, so you really need to pick up at least a Melusic, a Faker, a Spoofing, something. And, uh, ooh, this is not the best uh, way to start things off. Is it gonna be followed by four cards? He's really thinking uh, about it. Which is unusual, I would say. Doesn't look like happy. Probably asking uh, his opponent yeah. confirmation if everything is fine and just setting okay. free. So he might be holding a Faker or an Antrop, but definitely happy if your team. I think things could have gone much, much worse. And now the most important words, uh, <laughs> enter Battle Phase, could be there for team. Does he have it? He does enter. No. Okay. Ooh, but, uh... but the one copy of Red Ice Fusion again. Uh, this is huge, uh, and yeah, we have to see a solemn judgment come down from Steven. Uh, what a blowout from team. Wow. And now let's see, if he has the Twister, this uh. could be a very quick uh, game too. Yeah, you have to judgment for sure. Okay, yes, yeah. the fake. Oh, okay, nice. At least uh, the end definitely looking much better than it was. Uh, you can get the Melusic, uh, which is a decent uh, card for next turn. Imagine team having the heavily matched. Yeah, if team has the evenly matched here... Uh... <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would have been uh, maybe too much, but... Let's just see. Uh, yeah, I think you get Melusic yeah. uh, pretty much every time here. You could get Marionetter, there is a word, but mm. yeah, Manusik yeah, yeah, is yeah. just the safest option, I, I totally agree. And let's see, Twister, uh, by far the most threatening card right now, that team could be holding uh, Lefty, that's the case. Or maybe he just has the evenly now, and that's even more. <laughs> yeah. <than a> <laughs> 
I'd like to hear these words from Tim, but uh, no. Okay, okay. no. He Instead, has uh, it's gonna be much easier for Steven to fight back, uh, and uh, not gonna be suffering too much here. Let's see. Yeah, Ooh, strike. strike. Mm. Great response here by Steven. Down on only 2,500 life points, but definitely in a good spot at the moment. Oh, wow. The Viner, okay. Wow. Now would you activate, like, and bounce it back? Or, I mean... Yeah. I don't know, because it depends also what they want to send. Mm. Okay. okay, the Herald is there, not the Entity. Steven, uh, I think, uh, lets it uh, through. And uh, you can get the Benten, maybe. Always a safe option, I guess. Yeah. yeah. No-brainer here from team. He gets the Benten, and... Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see if he has enough to just uh, push back. The last back row is the biggest important, uh, I guess, thing. It's the most important thing there. Yeah. For now, not much of a surprise. But Steven is not really showing any signs of activating the back row. Uh, what he might have? Maybe the Torrential? Torrential is uh. an option for sure. Uh, yeah, there are a few possibilities. Spoofing one of the worst Spoofing. ones uh, he could have. Uh, and uh, as well as the other Alter Geist Trap, uh, you know. Those are definitely the worst. Uh, but let's see. Uh, there are definitely way, way too many traps to be guessing. And he even gets the Eva. Interesting. Okay. Mm. I mean, he knows it's a grind game, so you might as well uh, change the strategy a little bit and turn it into a, a proper grind game right now. He's thinking now if uh, maybe going into the Fafnir. Mm. But then if you go into Fafnir, you basically are forcing him uh, uh, to activate and bounce him back. Ah, okay, no. Interesting. Uh, so instead of going for the Fafnir... Uh, uh, team actually goes for a completely different line uh, Def Def and he goes into the Fuko, yeah. Kicking Agashi. So, definitely a uh, first uh, time we've seen this uh, on any stream lately, I think. Yeah, I think it's maybe the, the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure at all. We have not yet seen that card in action, uh, uh, but it's really strong uh, to be uh, summoned into the Zeus. But, uh, let's see. Definitely a really good idea. And uh, yeah, it was the spoofing, so bad news from Steven here. Not the worst, but he will have to try some things out. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it's tough. As mentioned, uh, you can go for the Zeus, but uh, now, yeah, the Conquery is there. So you can negate the attack. Yeah. Which is a great uh, play. Oh, no. What's going on? He didn't activate it. Uh, what? I guess he wants to protect uh, the silk uh, mm. from. But that's. Uh... I don't know. Yeah, you can see Steven being a little confused here on what just happened. I thought that was a no brainer to just negate the attack. To... I think. It is, is he considering it? I mean, like. No, because I saw Team. Uh... Yeah, just writing down the damage which he took from attacking the Melusik. Uh, so now he doesn't even have the options. Uh, ah, okay, or no, no, maybe okay. it was a different kind of damage. I don't know. It's. Uh, I thought they already took the damage, but maybe as you mentioned... Uh, okay, okay, no, yeah. <laughs> I got afraid for a moment. And I think maybe this is what they're going to discuss. Because as you know, Conquery negates the attack. So this is uh, very, very tough if you are a team. But of course, as it's unaffected by other cards' effects, uh, the Conquery, uh, I don't know. I think Steven, unfortunately, is uh, getting a little confused on what's going on. And now this Zeus uh, is going to change the game upside down. So, definitely a moment of confusion uh, from uh, Steven. 
Ok, va. Uh, The Herald! Wow! wow. <laughs> This is huge! A big risk, uh, by the way, from team. I did not understand it, uh, but luckily <laughs> for him, because if he went directly into the Zeus, then uh, he didn't risk the Silk. Yeah. But instead he went for the downer and he had the Herald to negate it. Wow. <laughs> no. What a turnaround. And now the Zeus without uh, being sent back is one of the scariest things that can happen for Altergeist. Uh, I don't want to be in the Steven uh, spot. So. <laughs> he had the Herald. With Eve as well, like uh, the nuts. So. Yeah, absolutely an amazing end here. And, here uh, comes the Zeus uh, with the Herald in hand. Great stuff from team. I think we might see him, uh, see him activating the Zeus. Okay, that's what he does. He also has called by yeah, on the this music. <laughs> Wow, what a turnaround! And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is uh, looking like uh, it might be a quick two and all from team uh, who really wants to be the only one with Drytron advancing today too. And yeah, uh, play seems like it's back on his tracks. Let's see. He, I don't know. There, there is a miracle at waiting here, and team uh, not gonna risk it. Uh, at all uh, and just gonna try and win the game uh, here and now. Was it about a feather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just swings uh, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, his opponent <laughs> sees the line, picks up, uh, no battle feather this time, uh, and team uh, advances with a 2 and 0 victory and is the last player from today to advance to the day two. Congratulations to both and let's quickly go back to us for the post-match discussion.